Hello viewers, this is the most dangerous car in Gran Turismo 7. And the reason for that is, well, whenever it comes up in the online races, it's bound to cause a lot of bowling alleys going into turn one, just like this. It's also incredibly hard to control, as I proved here in this moment. Now, when I first joined this race, I thought I would take a look at the number one time in the world and it was actually very smooth sailing and this guy was doing a very good job to make this look very very easy i can assure you it wasn't now you can see there's some very intricate tricks with gear selection going into a lot of the corners and coming out of the corners for example here at the final chicane coming out of here in fourth gear which feels like two gears too many but actually there's so much power in this car you need to do that and then here's my first attempt at driving the car and it was nowhere near as graceful as what we just witnessed coming out of here you see there just getting on the power the back end just wants to come round. this car wants to kill you at every given opportunity here into the hairpin again another big snap into 130r and this corner proved to be my nemesis i would say in a modern Formula 1 car it's flat out, but in this car very much on the knife edge going through there if you want to go flat out. So let's jump into the first race, starting in second gear with one traction control to get off the line nice and quickly. You want to minimise the amount of gear shifts, ideally. And you see there, immediately going up into second from third. And actually fortunately on this occasion, we do not have a bowling alley situation. Uh, through the first couple of corners well maybe behind us we did but i wasn't really focused on what was going on behind as uh, we settle into second up behind raving bonkers we are now going to try to get past looking up the inside here into the dunlop curve not quite going to work we've gone with the cockpit view which actually works pretty well in this car if i must be honest there's not many cars where it works and i thought flying into the back of the car in front and in turn the guy behind goes into the back of me it's a bit of a dominoes effect there and uh, certainly misjudging the speed of the car in front almost into the back of him here and uh, I'm, I'm not sure what line he was trying to take there going for the grass line and that means I'm now up into the lead of the race now at the beginning of lap number two just really trying to carry the speed into turn one and obviously a little bit too much speed as uh, ending up drifting a little bit wide and surrendering the lead of the race but it wasn't long before we got back onto the tail of the leader who had this massive moment here proper heart in mouth stuff and well in the similar place to where Carlos Sainz had a big spin very recently around this track in the uh, Formula 1 race unfortunately on this occasion raving bonkers managed to keep it facing forward almost into the back of him here I think I did go into the back of him I think it proves that Raving Bonkers is a better driver than Carlos Sainz. Um, I'm sorry to announce. There you go. Now through 130R. Almost losing the back end, but keeping it in check. Into the chicane. We're going to shift up into fourth gear. You can see here the effect it has. As eventually, once the torque kicks in, boom. You see it immediately... Um, as we cross the start line to begin the third lap you get so much more of a boost because the other cars are busy shifting from second up to third up to fourth you've already done all the shifting and it's a bit like you've pressed the nitrous oxide button you just go flying past now this was not a clever moment go through 130r lose the back end overcorrect, boom and you've had your first meeting with barry r the, the japanese barry r of all people and would you look at that we've uh yes we've just surrendered the race almost losing control right on the final corner We're finishing second and i mean look the, the the mechanics there clapping but really i just bottled the race big time and uh, this guy says love and put me on youtube so there you go here's your moment good sir you are now on youtube anyway race number two and this time fortunately on pole position which does help to avoid the bowling alley that is Suzuka turns one and two let's try to just make some clear air between myself and the rest of the rest of the pack 
Now I did notice there was a an A plus rated player near the back of the pack, and already they've gone from eleventh to fourth, and now third. And uh, at this moment, well, I had a nice little scrape along the side of Japanese barrier. Uh, not really what I was aiming to do, but sometimes you just got to do it, you know. And uh, here we go, lap four, and then lap five, winning the race. So good stuff. We actually managed to get a race victory. Here's the race start. On board with the A plus rated player who started 11th. Getting a very good launch. Immediately up into 8th before we even get to turn 1. Then there's the bowling alley. Then there's more collisions. And they are already up into 4th with this guy in 2nd with a 10 second penalty. For presumably committing some crimes against humanity. It was that bad. And uh, it didn't take long for this guy to go from 11th to 2nd half a lap now here's the crimes against humanity which we just spoke about boom there you go smashing that guy straight off in a very good Ayrton Senna impression and uh, there it is confirmation of uh, the crimes and then this was the guy he went from 11th to second then on the second lap had this little moment and then just such an innocuous slow speed spin it looks so clumsy Oh, we've all been there. Then here's a replay of me uh, grinding my nose up against Barry R. But anyway, let's go on to race number three. This time I thought I'd join the Americas on the Squat Speed account, and then boom. Now, after doing a 4,000 point turn, which took about 10 years, I managed to get going in P10. Uh, yellow flag already at turn one there was someone over there you might be able to make out some pixels in the distance of a maldonado who has found themselves with a very early meeting with a japanese barrier now end of lap number one well actually no it's not the end it's the midway point as we go under the bridge uh, move up into eighth position not sure what that guy was doing and moved right out of the way for me so i'll take the position quite quite gladly and then here, you can see the speed difference when you can get on the power in the correct gear as we go flying past this guy like he's got a Formula 2 engine. And then into Spoon Curve, we have a guy with a penalty. And he's just kind of kind of just give up. He's like, nah, I don't really fancy taking this corner. It's going to drive straight off. Um, and this guy turns a corner that didn't even exist. That was a straight, and he tried to turn left. Uh, so that was quite unusual behaviour, I would say. But what that means is I now find myself in P5 after doing a 4,000 point turn straight away in the race, which is never ideal. Now this guy rejoins the track, nice little switcheroo, up into fourth gear, and surely we're going to have to pick a side here because we're going to get the boost. There it is, flying past on the left. There's a bit of contest as we go through. I'm not sure if you saw me, but up into P3, and now look in. Like we could get a healthy podium here, but definitely could do better because at the end of lap two, we're beginning to catch up with Fed Smoker in uh, P2. You know, the well known goat, really. I mean, Scott Speed is a goat, but the other goat is Fed Smoker. We all know that. Anyone, anyone who ranks Schumacher, Hamilton, Senna above this guy is quite frankly deluded. And we all know that. Uh, coming up into the chicane. Um, Getting a nice little overtake there. And one goat past another. Trading places. And actually, I don't get a good launch here. He actually uh, appears in my rear view mirror. But then we get a nice little push and it helps us down the straight. And I am 5.3 seconds away from the leader, the, uh, the leader of this race. The Mexican called Bex. Maybe it's David Beckham on his Mexican alternative account. You never know. I know it's a very small chance, but you never know. You never know. It could be true. It could be him. I reckon David Beckham has a go on GT7 every now and then. And you can't prove me otherwise. Then anyway, through Dunlop Curve, lap number three, we're pretty much halfway into this race. And I've already shaved off about one and a half seconds on this lap as we clatter over the curb of Degna 1 through Degna 2, keep it in third gear to get good traction off the exit there as we go under the bridge, winding round towards the hairpin, late on the brakes at the end of the kerb on the right, down to the second gear but back to third to get the, the traction on the exit of the corner. Gap at 3.5 at the end of the lap, 2.9, setting the fastest lap of the race. 
and then as we approach the hairpin for the fourth time the gap now down to 1.4 and uh, David Beckham is well within sight we're going to try and hunt him down here with a lap and a third left to go as we wind round to the right into the into the left of Spoon in third gear he's a little bit wide there and uh, we're going to shift up into fourth to get the get the launch off this turn and yes the gearing's very weird on these cars but such is the power you do have to kind of drive in a gear higher than you normally would up the inside we go into 130R just lifting off slightly there's a bit of contact on the apex there's not much more I think I could have done there met the apex gave him space on the outside but uh, David Beckham was really pushing it around the outside really trying to keep that position didn't quite work out and we almost lose the back end on the final lap but thankfully keep it keep it all together to bring home a fantastic win Scott Speed last to first three point turn overtaking everyone to take a fantastic victory and uh, our good friend here letting us know that he visited Barry R immediately so let's take a look he started on pole position did A. Maldonado and then suddenly goes a bit wide and then suddenly boom out of nowhere this is this is wasn't a bowling alley this was more like I would say this was snooker so this is Ayrton Senna aka Ronnie O'Sullivan as he comes flying in watch this boom smashes the cue ball into Maldonado and then suddenly he finds himself in the wall and it's no surprise really that he's dressed as Senna at turn two of Suzuka he, he actually crashed not not long after but um we jump into the final race up against Shroto Wolf a truly formidable opponent to ever grace the race race circuit this time I'm going to try not to drive into the back of my opponent at the start of the race that would help and we have we've uh, we've done that we've we've negotiated the start the, the straight at the very start which should be quite easy but sometimes it isn't especially in this kind of race where you've got a grid start and often you know this kind of race comes up a fair amount the f1500 ta f1 car and it does just simply cause a lot of carnage it's a very difficult car to drive which in itself means a lot of people are going to crash and then combine that with the fact that it's daily race a so it's not a long race people are going to push and really be aggressive very early on as we move up into third and then you've got the grid start so everyone's very close together so you've got all these factors and when you combine all those factors it results in a very chaotic race as we get pushed from behind into the hairpin and thankfully keep it together up to third gear harley rider here not making the most of third gear on the exit and you see the speed difference as we move up into p2 up behind Shroto Wolf. We try and hunt him down and go for the win. There's lots of big names in here. David Beckham, now Shroto Wolf, even an Ayrton Senna was in here as well. So lots of big names. It's always good to see the famous, the rich and famous playing Gran Turismo 7. But anyway, into the final chicane, lap number one, 1 1.1 seconds away from P1 and we're going to try to hunt him down up into fourth gear and just wait for that power to come kicking in there it is these cars must be so scary to drive in reality and you know fair play to those that did back in the day back in the you know 60s 70s 80s f1 as i go flying wide there and lose a good second or so to the leader and now i've got two drivers in very close attention who i would really rather not have to deal with this car is rather hard enough to drive on its own without having to focus on a couple of cars in your mirror as we wind round to the right then to the left of the uphill corner of Dunlop up into fourth gear getting the traction there's a big bump on the middle of the turn about there and we avoid spinning on it as I did earlier it was like Shroto there had a had a bit of a wiggle on the exit of Degna 1 and we've reduced the the deficit now to 0.8 of a second he's gone very deep into the hairpin and this is our chance i would have thought to try to go for the race win 
and we're going to look for the outside here is he going to kind of block it off yes i'm not going to quite go for that move there got plenty of time to try to complete this there's no need to rush it and be silly about it you know to be nice and patient here right into the back of him in fact i think we connected briefly i would say now coming up towards 130r this is i would say the trickiest faster corner on the track as you fling it to the left and the back end really does want to go around and we keep it in check i think it's best safest to lift off as we go into the back of schroto he's not going to be happy about that uh, so i'm going to kind of concede on the second apex unfortunately in turn letting through liberty he now jumps up into second down into third now for the time being as we head down in towards turn one lap number three they're going to go side by side and i'm seizing my opportunity here i would have thought we're going to try and do the old switcheroo and we're not going to do the typical old switcheroo we're going to do a double old switcheroo there and crofty is going absolutely mental in the commentary box right now as we pull off the double switcheroo i mean that's a rarity and you're not, you know, just remember where you were when you saw this, all right? And tell your grandchildren about it because that was a fantastic moment. What wasn't a fantastic moment was that for the guy in second who had some sort of mistake through Dunlop and lost a handful of seconds. And from there on in, I didn't really look backwards, bringing home a fantastic win yet again for Scott Speed, the GOAT. There he is, bringing it home absolutely fantastic driving as ever but there we go that's the f1500 ta really does bring about some fantastic content because everyone crashes all the time and we all love that and if you missed my recent video where i was driving the radical at donington do give it a click it's on the screen right now and get yourself subscribed to the channel if you haven't already thank you so much for watching have a fantastic day and i shall see you next time